All right, Revelation 17 and 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. All right, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahabashai, Ba'ashem Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, this lesson was inspired from um, the elder apostle of Rumlob. And uh, in his live stream today, he threw out a title for brothers to use if they wanted to for a lesson. And that title was Ease Destiny for Destruction. Ease Destiny for Destruction. All right. What is Ease Destiny for Destruction? Doom. All right. Who is E? E is Esau Edom. Okay. So uh, before I even read that again, Revelation 17 and 5, I went into Google and just looked quick word of destiny, quick meaning. It says the events that will necessarily happen to a particular person or thing in the future. It says the hidden power believed to control what will happen in the future, fate. All right, so the event that will necessarily happen to a particular person or thing in the future. All right, what is that? That is doom, that is destruction. Ease destiny for destruction. It says the hidden power believed to control what will happen in the future, fate. So what is ease, fate? His fate is doom, destruction, captivity, all right? And that's according to scripture, Bible scripture. Now it says similar future, fate, fortune, doom, lot, portion, do. You know, that word portion stands out. I believe there's a scripture in Job where it says this is the portion of a wicked man, all right? That word lot stands out because he's in his lot, all right? We're all in our lot. The elect is in their lot. Two thirds are in their lot. Uh, you have um, Esau. He's in his lot. All right. He's setting that stage. Okay. The Most High is uh, Yahweh. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is uh, what is written in Romans nine, nine and thirteen and down. All right. He's uh, 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 matter of fact, let me get it real quick. Come back. Come back to Revelation 17. So Romans 9 and 13, which which says, um, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with Yahweh? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then is it is it not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth? But of Yahweh that show of mercy. For the scriptures say unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. And that was the point there I wanted to make. Is that the most the Lord is purposely um, um, raising Esau up, okay, setting forth that pride of Esau to think that he is the most high. To think that he will sit in the seat of the Most High. It says that I might show my power in thee and that my name, notice key word, my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Because that's the glory that's going to come into the Heavenly Father and His Son, Yahweh Shai. And then us being joint to Yahweh Shai, which is the whole four elect, if we endure, right? So that was the point on that. And that's what the Lord is doing to Esau, all right? Esau has lived out his blessing and we in the end of it. And what is the end of Esau? Destruction. Okay, destruction. As the scriptures say in Hebrews, you know, there is no repentance for Esau, even though he sought it with tears. So back here in Revelation 17 and 5, it says, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And what is the mystery? Well, it was a mystery to know what was Babylon the Great? You know, for many years, people wondered, what was this Babylon the Great, the second Babylon, in which the Lord was going to destroy from off the face of the earth? Well, it's no longer a mystery. Mystery Babylon the Great is North America. All right. It says the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. All right. This is the most sinful, wicked land 
okay, on the planet, all right? This is the place where they call the land of the free, the home of the brave, was really the, the land of the slaves and the home of the gays. You know, there's unrighteous laws passed, all right, for harlots to come, it promotes adultery, sorcery, all right, all enchantments, worshiping demons, you can worship Satan, all right, the false philosophies, the lies, you know, it's all uplifted. There's no righteousness uplifted on Esau in Esau's part, all right, while he rules this world. And despite all the laws that he have set in place to govern this place, there's none righteous toward Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. Esau doesn't even use the term, you know, you're wicked. All right. We use that term. Those of the whole four elect. And when we say that amongst people that are just under, of the world, you know, they look at you strange. When we say, yo, that bitch wicked, you know, or that dude wicked as hell. You know, they go, what? He what? You know? But um, anyway, it says Babylon the Great, the mother of Holics, and abomination of the earth. All right. Um, I want to get this scripture here because this topic is about E's destiny of destruction, right? And his, dest and his destiny of destruction is, is uh, doom and captivity. So this is Revelations 18 and 19. It says, and they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing. Matter of fact, let's read here. Revelations 18 and 1, and I'll jump. It says, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit in a cage of every uh, unclean and hateful bird. So this is the aftermath of, of, of America, is that this place is going to be a desert place with all foul spirits. It says a cage of unclean and hateful birds. So... The Bible is, is, um, is letting us know the destiny, the fate of Esau's Edom and his kingdom. It says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth shall wax rich through the abundance of her delicacy. And that happened because all these other nations, you know, sat up under Esau Edom and his rules and let him dictate on how the world should be ran. And now you see all nations are at one to a point that they all agree to bring it forth a new world order, all right, where everybody basically merged with technology so that they, you know, Esau, Edom, and the rest of those kings, all right, they can sit in the seat of the Most High, all right? They can rule the world in a, in a, in a different way where they can monitor us as if they are the Heavenly Father, all right? They want us to be microchip. They want us to be programmed. They want technology in our bodies. All right. So these other nations ate with the, the uh, with Babylon. All right. Now, um, let me just get to point because this lesson seems like it's going to be long. It says, um, it says, reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, and the cup which she had filled fill her double. So the Lord is going to bring double upon this upon you Edomites. The same as you filled our cup, the Lord's going to fill your cup double. All right, now it's raining pretty hard. Uh, Lord willing, slow it down for me. Um, it says, how much has she glorified herself and lived deliciously? So much torment and sorrow get uh, so much torment and sorrow give her. But she say in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. It says, therefore shall her plague come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burnt with fire, for strong is the Lord Yahweh who judgeth her. You see? So we're reading the destiny, all right, E's destiny of destruction. All right? It says, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. So this place is going to be on fire, man. All right? And that's going to be the in the that's going to be by the of the way of thermonuclear destruction. It says, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, At last, at last, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thou judgment come. You see that? In one hour is the judgment come. 
So when the Most High brings forth Esau's destiny of destruction, all right, this place is not going to be played out in like, you know, a Floyd Mayweather 12 round fight. It's going to be more like a Mike Tyson, okay? Or more like a Mike Tyson uh, 30, uh, 160 seconds a minute or 30 seconds knockout, man. It says, standing afar off for her, for the fear of her torment, saying, at last, at last, that great city Babylon, that mighty city for in one hour is thou judgment come. All right. Um, uh, let me see. Jump 19. It says, uh, verse 19, and they cast dust on their foot, on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, at last, at last, that great city wherein were made rich all that has ships in the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour is she made desolate all right so now let me go into uh the original chapter i wanted to read which is isaiah 47 all right isaiah 47 it says come down and sit in the dust o virgin daughter of babylon sit on the ground there is no throne O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. This place is no longer going to be called tender and delicate. You can see it now, man. You know, the streets are eerie. The businesses are not ran. Esau is destroying his own kingdom because in his mind, he believes he's going to build it back up. That's Malachi. That's Malachi, man. Malachi, the first chapter. They shall build, but the Lord shall destroy. So Esau... Esau's plan is to destroy this place and that's the same plan that the Heavenly Father has but the point is that the Lord is using Esau okay to set the stage to bring down his own kingdom and then the Most High is going to take over and it's, this this chapter gets into that it lets you know that there's nothing that Esau can do once the Lord takes over all right so it says come down and sit in the dust O virgin daughter of Babylon sit on the ground there is no throne O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. It says, Take the millstone and grind mill, uncover thou locks, make bare the lake, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. It says, un un Uncover the locks, make bare the lake, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Now, this reminds me of um, when Paul said, um, He shall be revealed in his time. Because truly, this place, Esau Edom, is being exposed, he's being revealed. Of being the Edomites of the scriptures. It says, Thou nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thou shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and will not meet thee as a man. So you see that Yahweh Shai is not coming back to meet Esau as a man. Alright, he's not coming to lay down his life again. He did that. And he did it for the Israelites, in particular the elect. He's not laying his life down for no Edomites, especially nobody that's calling him Jesus, Jesus Christ. Okay, it says thou nakedness shall be uncovered, meaning you're going to be exposed like you are now. Yea, thou shame shall be seen. The whole world can see the shame of these Rothschilds, of these elites. Okay, they can see the shame here that's happening in Babylon. It says I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. So the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right, is taking vengeance upon Esau. That's why the title is Ease Destined for Ease Destiny of destruction okay he's destined for destruction it says as for our redeemer the lord yahweh of hosts is his name the holy one of israel all right so yahweh of armies is his name the holy one of israel uh sit thou silent and get thee into darkness O daughter of the chaldeans but thou shalt no more be called the lady of kingdoms and right now this place is no longer a lady of kingdoms First off, to be a lady is to be gentle, delicate, beautiful, smell good, you know? This place is no longer that lady, that place that everybody wants to be. Meanwhile, you got millionaires and billionaires leaving this place because they already can see the future of this place, all right? They're leaving America because they want to stay. They don't want to go through the hell. They can see that there's no, um, no future. They can see that the future of this place is doomed it says i was wroth with my people i have polluted my inheritance and given them into thy hand thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient has thou very heavily laid thou yoke you see
So who was, who was the Lord's people? The Israelites. The Lord said he was rough with his people. He was rough, man. Okay? Matter of fact, real quick. Alright, now the word rough, just just quick edification. The word rough means to, to be displeased. So the Lord was displeased. Be angry, fret oneself, be rough. To be wroth, to be full of wrath, to be furious, to provoke, to wrath or anger, to put oneself in a rage, anger oneself. So the Lord was angry and displeased with Israel. All right. All right. I'm going to try to make this quick. Rain coming down really hard. Uh, Isaiah 47 and 6 I was wroth with my people I have polluted my inheritance And given them into thy hand Thou didst show them no mercy Upon the ancient has thou very heavily laid thy yoke Okay Esau has always laid his yoke down upon us Alright Because it goes back to the hatred that he had against Jacob For Jacob supplanting Esau two times For the birthright and for the blessing Alright It says And thou And notice I have to stress that the Lord said um, he have given them into thy hand Because Esau, Edom didn't take us down with his power It was the power of the Almighty upon him to take us down Alright Because ain't no credit going to you Edomites Because you're nobody Scriptures say you're the lowest among the heathen You know Esau is proud right now And he wants credit for everything You know he makes himself to be the angels You know he makes Yahweh shy to look like him and his people When that's totally a lie When they whitewash they use iconoclasm, you know, with pictures and things like that, you know. And now Esau is being exposed. Everything that's of a lie is being brought into obedience under Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So verse 7 for, uh, says, And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou did not lay these things to thou heart, neither did remember the latter end of it. You see? And that's that pride that these, um, these international bankers, starting with the Rothschilds, they have. It says, and shall, it says, and thou said, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart. Why, why is that? Because Esau, with everything that's being done, is all controlled by them. All right? They have, uh, what they call it, um, stimulate, uh, what's the word? I'm always forgetting this word. Um, stimulations where they, they use certain computers and technology to play out agendas. You know, it's something called auto abkeo, problem, reaction, solution, okay? And everything that's being done now, you better believe that it's controlled by them. So they're not afraid or they're not, not in, uh, you know, in fear of losing this place because they're the ones that orchestrated and destroyed this economy in the way that it is now because they want to bring in a new, econ a new economy with digital currency where everyone's pro program and uh, plugged into technology inside our bodies but guess what they didn't lay these things to their heart neither did remember the latter end of it because they're not understanding that Yahweh Shah is going to return and recover his remnant his elect and that they're setting a the stage and when that stage or let's say that that scene that the Lord is ready to take over even though the Lord has already taken over I'm just trying to put it in a way you can understand that um, once Esau meet that mark, Yahweh Bashem Al Shah is going to take over, man. And there's nothing that Esau is going to be able to do about it. All right, that's when they're going to be afraid because everything that they're orchestrating and putting together is not working in their favor. It says, verse eight. Therefore, hear now this, thou that are given to pleasures, that the well is carelessly, that sayest in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. That's pride. All right. It says, but these, uh, but these two things shall come to thee in a moment and one day, the loss of children and widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thy enchantments, man. All right. Because uh, what's that? Uh, Sirach, I believe it's 39 and 28. When the Lord said he created uh, spirits for vengeance and they appeased the wrath of him that made them. Now, when it says they shall come upon thee in their perfection, all right, that's the Lord sending them dangers out, man. 
for the multitude of thy sorceries, their witchcraft, for the great abundance of thine enchantments. Right now, Esau is swimming and bathing in his enchantments, his sorceries, his witchcraft, all right? The television, to these, these cell phones, you know, to their uh, social networks, mainstream networks, you know, it's all sorcery. You know, the brother Shaw in the camp, he always, he goes into it from time about how uh, the TV has a fuse and flicker and how they subconsciously play upon your mind. You know, that's why commercials pop up. You know, an example, commercials pop up in the middle of guys who want to make money off the YouTube videos, the commercials pop up because it plays on your self-conscious. You know, as it drives you away from what you're watching to, to buy, you know? You know, even if it's sex, you know, you the flash, you might not even be thinking about sex as a man, right, or a woman. And then all of a sudden, you have um, a video come on, a commercial come on, and it's a woman's ass showing, or a man without a shirt. And all of a sudden, you... You know, Esau, Esau knows how the mind works. So the Lord is, hey, he's going to challenge you, Edomites, man. It says, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thy enchantments. You can't tell me this ain't talking about uh, Esau, Edom, right? The abundance, great abundance, man. It says, for thou, for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, none seeth me. Thou wisdom and thou knowledge, it hath perverted thee, and thou hast said in thou heart, I am, and none else beside me. All right, and what did the, our Lord say? Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, he said he's a jealous power. For Esau to have this pride and to think that none sits else beside him but him, that's a great challenge to the Heavenly Father. Okay, and that's why we read Romans 9, the ninth chapter, going into how the Lord is really... Uh, uh, you know, heartening Esau's heart so that the Most High can bring forth that glory to his name by destroying these Edomites. All right, so as the title is, is list is titled, E's Destiny for Destruction is doomed. It's straight up doomed. Their fate is doomed. And you can see it now. It says, It hath perverted thee, and, and thou hast said in thy heart, which is their mind, I am, and none else beside me. That's pride. Verse 11, therefore shall evil come upon thee, and thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. Now here's that point that I was thinking of early in the lesson. And mischief shall fall upon thee, thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. All right, because it's going to come a point where you Edomites, all right, starting with these elites that run the show, call the shots, right, push the buttons. You're not going to know from whence it riseth. When Yahweh Bashem Yahushua truly, okay, takes over and you're not in control anymore. All right. Uh, Job, I believe that's 14. Uh, you can't cross that boundary. You know, you can't cross that boundary, man. You can't cross that. So it says, therefore shall evil come upon thee. All the evil that Esau do from their blood sacrifice, sexual rituals, the evil is going to come upon you. It says, thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. You're not going to know when it's coming. Hey, Yahweh Shai said he come like a thief in the night. All right. So how, how much more uh, the Lord's uh, 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 pe pestilences and plagues, and his curses. You know, the curses are uh, slowly being removed off of us, but going to be put upon you. And mischief shall fall upon thee. All right. You know, when, when, is, when do you ever see Esau uh, uh, have a loss of children, man? You know, look at Chicago for an example, man. Chicago is, um, you know, known for, you know, I believe the nickname is Chirac. You know, it's a lot of killings. It'd be breaking records, man. And multiple people killed in one day. Multiple people shot in one day. You know, what, what, whatever does that happen to Esau? You know, it could go into Psalm 73, you know. Where's the, uh, the ban in, in Esau's death? Where's the loss of his children? Right? It says, thou shalt not be able to put it off. You're not going to be able to put this off. It says, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. All right? So it's going to come a point when Yahweh is going to take over. All right? Even though the Lord, he's he, not saying he doesn't have the order of power now, but hey, Esau is, is set up. The Most High is setting you up. He think he's setting us up. The Heavenly Father setting you up. It says, stand now with thy enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. 
if so be thou, thou mayest prevail all right and that's how you know the lord is a jake well let's say we're made in his image and if yeah the heavenly father will be a, a, a person he will be jake all right just like the he came in the flesh he was of the tribe of judah he was a so-called negro you can clearly see uh how it's written and how and how how the mannerism of our lord and how he speaks just like us you know when jake is kicking your ass beating your ass in the street he's talking shit to you man check out benjamin man benjamin when they beating your ass and slapping the hell out you you know they they talking shit to you levi do the same judah do the same ephraim do the same that's jake that's not esau's nature you know now standing down enchantments and with the thou multitudes of thou sorceries wherein thou has labored from thou youth if so be thou shalt be able to profit if so be thou mayest prevail it says thou art weary in the multitude of thou counsels so that means you tired esau is tired it says let none of the let now the astrologers and the stargazers and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee behold they shall be as stubble the fire shall burn them they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame they shall not be a coal to warm at nor fire to sit before it it says thou uh, thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou has labored even thou merchants from thou youth they shall wander every one to his quarter none shall save thee all right you know and that's basically the point the lesson man i hope this lesson was edifying um to the whole four elect you know these messages and these lessons will go out to the whole four elect and uh you few sisters out there that do listen and tune in you know maybe how about me i was shy continue to uh you know help us to endure all the way to the end you know so with that you know the title of this lesson was uh ease Des destiny of destruction all right which is their destiny their fate is doom and captivity so with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Makakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect. Shalom.